Hi YouTube. So I'm going to do two videos, two or three videos, I think really two, about uh, occult astrology and uh, spiritual astrology and how you can tell your spiritual path from the horoscope and also uh, the timing of spiritual progress through transits. Now I'm using something called Gymini Astrology and I really want to gear this towards uh, Western astrologers because it's relatively easy to learn um, if you teach it the right way. Uh, Gymini or Maharishi Gymini was a sage that is a contemporary of Parashara and uh, he lived around 600 BC and he wrote a book on in uh, coded Sanskrit on uh, predictive astrology and it's very straightforward and in my opinion uh, the most effective way for or to make predictions um, and extremely accurate and I'm going to do a lot of videos about what he says but mainly two or three on spirituality and the occult um, he deals with things like who you are, your career, who you're going to marry, uh, your illnesses, um, your longevity, even the illnesses of your spouse and what they look like and all that kind of thing. Um, and so it's, uh, it's extremely accurate, I found it to be. And um, yeah, so there's a couple of translations out there. Uh, and I want to recommend, I'm going to put it down in the description, a link to it. I have the book. It's right here. This is called uh, Jaimini Sutras Ra, Volume 1. And it's uh, the first chapter translated of Maharishi Jaimini Sutram, or also called Upadesha Sutras. And this is by Ernst Wilhelm, um, who taught me astrology. And I highly recommend it if you're interested to really learn the, the Jaimini techniques in depth, okay? So anyway, to get started, um, to learn, before I get into uh, how to tell when you'll make spiritual progress or the most ideal times to uh, make spiritual progress, or the most ideal times to, um, especially if you're a Kriya Yogi or a Kundalini Yogi or a Tantra Yogi, uh, or you practice any of those things, even uh, Taoist techniques, uh, I'll show you uh, the best times when the masculine and feminine will merge, or they actually merge in your body, in the cosmos of your body, or your chakras. And then um, that's what I'm going to talk about today. But before I get into that, I have to explain something called Jaimini transits. Now all astrologers are familiar with transits, uh, the square, the trine, um, you know, the conjunction, sextile, you name it. And then in Vedic astrology there are special transits uh, by Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn and uh, special aspects they make and all that. Um, if you're a Vedic astrologer you're probably familiar with that. Well, today I have to teach you um, sign-based transits, or they're Jaimini transits. And it's really easy to learn, it's not intimidating at all, it's very easy. Um, and so I'm going to teach you that first, and then I'm going to get into the nitty-gritty of the spiritual practices and uh, timing spiritual progress. Okay? So, now... Um, in order to do that, I have to show you on the board something here, okay? This is the South Indian chart, and it is fixed. Um, you're all familiar, all your astrologers out there are familiar with a wheel, and then um, if you're looking at it straight on, on the left-hand side, that's the ascendant, and then the, uh, the signs move around in a um, counterclockwise direction. In this system, it's really easy, okay? In this system, it, the signs are fixed, but it's the ascendant that moves, okay? And it goes in a clockwise direction, and it's always in a square with 12 smaller squares around the periphery, which is the chart. Okay, so in this square is always Aries, this first one right here. 
Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sag, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. They're always fixed. And you, the ascendant is a little line right here. A little um, diagonal line. So that moves through these squares and not the signs. The signs always stay the same. And the reason that is, is because this, this diagram is based on the chakras, the human chakras. And that's because over here in the north, this is uh, Cancer and Leo, and for the, those of us in the northern hemisphere, um, the sun in the north is in Cancer and Leo, or it's the, the farthest north it can be. Um, so, and also in the summer, southern hemisphere too, but it's summer for us and winter for the people in the southern hemisphere. But anyway, um, Cancer and Leo represent the third eye, okay? They're the masculine and feminine sides of the third eye. The Leo is the uh, third eye or the Ajna chakra, and um, the, or the Cancer is the feminine side of the third eye, which is uh, the Bindu back here. Now, um, and then over here is Gemini and Virgo, which is the throat chakra ruled by Mercury. The, um, this is Taurus and Libra, the heart chakra ruled by Venus. Aries and Scorpio, the um, solar plexus or the, uh, gosh, it's escaping me now. I forgot the name of the chakra. But it's the solar plexus, Muladhara, or... Savisana, Muladhara. I'm sorry, I'm spacing out right now. <laughs> but it's the um, it's the it's the solar plexus chakra right here, and that's ruled by Mars. And then the um, uh, Jupiter rules the um, Pisces and Sag, which is the sex chakra or the Swadhisthana chakra. And then uh, right here, Aquarius and Capricorn, uh, the Muladhara chakra or the first chakra. And that's ruled by Saturn. Okay, so now what you want the in the in the outside world, the sun is moving through the zodiac all the time, and it moves north and south with the seasons, and the moon is moving through the zodiac and all the other planets. But inside of us as well, these the moon and the sun and the Mars and all the planets are moving through our chakras. The just like they are outside. It's mirroring inside. And what it's doing, it's, it's uh, aspecting or conjuncting our birth, um, what is in our birth chakra, just like it's in our birth chart. Now, the sun moves through the zodiac, and um, when the sun and moon conjoin, when the outside sun conjoins with our moon inside, or when the outside moon conjoins with our sun inside, that's when we can bring the two halves together, or that gives us a lot more opportunity. We, we, can't, we can or can't do it depending on our effort and our, you know, our, our natural talent, but though that usually shows the time when we can make progress in bringing up the Kundalini energy and merging, or, or actually if you don't even practice that, something where you can find complete contentment in the marriage of the two halves of ourselves, the animus or the anima, um, or uh, whatever you want to call it, the masculine feminine side, okay? So, when, I'm just going to use an example, um, or I'm just going to say my moon is here in Leo. I'm a Leo moon. So whenever the sun is in Leo, which is in the end of July and August, um, that is a, a primary time for me to make spiritual progress. So wherever your birth moon is, whenever the sun moves through that sign in the outside zodiac, that's a great time for you to marry the, um, the serpent energy up to the top of your, in, in your head, either here or on the top. Now, um, as well, in addition to that, we all have our sun. So my sun, my sun is in Pisces. That's my sun. So whenever the moon, 
goes through the sign of Pisces, that's also a very good time for me to, to bring the energy up or to make progress in mirroring my, the two halves of myself. Um, and that's, uh, it stays, the moon stays in a sign about two and a half days. So, so those are um, once a month, the moon will move through Pisces. Or, yeah, once a month that we'll move through Pisces, so that's always, once a month, two and a half days, I'll always have that opportunity, not just during the summer here in Leo in August. Now, in addition to that, there's something called Gymini sign aspects, which I was explaining earlier. And this is what they are, okay? And it's based on this system this this uh, South Indian chart. The dual signs, the signs in the corners here, Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, and Sag, they all aspect each other. The corners aspect each other. The dual signs aspect each other. And the, the sign aspects the sign, not planets, but signs. They're looking at each other. And they call that the mirror. These are called mirror aspects. So it's basically, they're looking in the mirror at each other, okay? Now, here's where it gets a little more complicated, but it's not a big deal. Um, all of the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, the signs that begin, are, are the beginning of the seasons, okay? All right, so they all aspect fixed signs except the one next to them. So that means Aries aspects all the fixed signs, Leo, Scorpio, and, and Aquarius, except for the one next to him, which is Taurus. And then, let's say Capricorn aspects Taurus, Leo, and Scorpio, but he, um, he does not aspect Aquarius, which is the fixed sign next to him, okay? And then now the fixed signs, which is Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius, Taurus, these signs aspect the cardinal signs except for the one next to them. So Taurus will aspect Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, but he will not aspect Aries. Let's say um, Leo. Leo will aspect Libra, Capricorn, Aries, but will not aspect Cancer. So that's how it goes. The, the fixed signs will aspect in this, in this diagram here, in this uh, chart, South Indian chart, the fixed signs will aspect all of the cardinal signs, but not the one next to them and the cardinal signs will aspect all of the fixed signs except for the one next to them. And there is a um, metaphysical deeper reason for this, and you can kind of think about it and figure it out your, yourself and come up with why that is. But, uh, but it's really interesting. They call these signs the mirrors. It's mirror aspects. And when certain uh, events happen in someone's life, when... Um, and you don't see any transits triggering this event, if you're a Western astrologer or a Vedic astrologer for that matter, you don't see the triggering transits, it's because you haven't learned these Gymini transits. And they actually go to the degree, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. So the whole purpose of me explaining this is, <laughs> um, so let's go back to what I was saying. The sun is moving through the zodiac, right? And like I said, in my case, when the sun moves through Leo, I'm going to have, um, that's a great opportunity for me to try to marry the halves of myself or um, bring up the energy through my spine. It's a very great opportunity because the outside sun is married to my inside sun or the masculine side outside is mirroring my inside feminine, okay? Now also, in addition to that, when the sun, since Leo is a fixed sign, when the sun moves through the cardinal signs, Libra, Capricorn, and Aries, 
then they uh, that will also be an opportunity for me to uh, to bring up the energy or make spiritual progress in um, actual contentment. So, so there's uh, four months out of the year where I can do this, not just one. The same goes for when the moon moves through. Okay, so I've got the sun in Pisces, right? So whenever the moon is in Pisces, which is about two and a half days a month, that's a very opportune time for me to make spiritual progress. Now, also, in addition to that, when the moon moves through Gemini, Virgo, or Sag, that also will uh, facilitate spiritual progress for me in my case because the cardinals or the dual signs aspect each other. They all aspect each other. So that's one reason. Um, you can probably try to listen to this over again if you don't understand it, but the, it's very simple. Once you draw it out like this, you just have to remember these, these cardinal signs aspect the fixed signs, except the one next to it, and vice versa. The fixed signs um, aspect the cardinal signs, except the one next to them. Okay, so um, that's, that's one uh, aspect of the Jaimini progress you can make. You know, if you're, if you're, uh, or even if you do things like if you call down spirits or, you know, summon or um, do invocations or evocations, or, or if you are, um, you know, doing any type of spiritual practice like that, uh, you know, astral projection or lucid dreaming, you're trying to get more insights, uh, deeper insights. These are always excellent times to do this. Remember the sun and the moon. Okay. Now, um, now, the next one I want to talk about are the moon's nodes, which are Rahu and Ketu in Vedic astrology. Uh, Ketu in Vedic astrology, which is the south node of the moon, represents moksha or liberation or enlightenment, whatever you want to call it. Um, and if you're not on, you know, a, a right-hand path type of thing, if you're on a left-hand path and you're you know, you're trying to become, you're facing the abyss and you're trying to develop, um, you know, your own godlike uh, self, then that's what K2 represents in that instance. Um, because K2 carries things over from the unconscious time. It carries things over from the abyss. That's what K2 does, or the south node of the moon. Now, it takes, um, it takes a year and a half for the nodes to move through a sign. They're always opposite each other, as you know. So right now, now, oh, and I, I want to just interject here. I always use the tropical zodiac. I do not use sidereal zodiac. So in case you're a Vedic astrologer and you're wondering, I use the tropical zodiac. And uh, yeah, I've used both. And that's what I prefer. Um, that's what I use. Um, some other astrologers that I've, I've learned from also do the same thing. So I just want to put that out there. <laughs> uh, so now, the um, right now, Rahu is in, it just moved into um, Leo. And K2 is in Aquarius. So um, when, when they touch... When K2 touches any of your moksha houses or your liberation houses, your enlightenment houses, which is the 12th house cusp, the 8th house cusp, and the 4th house cusp, these are all inner houses. These are all houses of making spiritual progress. Or when K2 goes through your ascendant, or when K2 goes through, uh, touches your moon your feminine, the moon, then that is all great times for spiritual progress. So, um, because K2 is the enlightenment planet, and when K2 is in an enlightenment house, it, um, it facilitates that. It's, it's a double whammy, if you will. So, always keep that in mind, the fourth, the eighth, and the twelfth house. Not through the houses, but can join the cusps in the sign, okay? Um, and that's when you can make incredible uh, spiritual advancement because K2 is helping you there, or the south node of the moon is helping you. Um, 
So I think that's all really for today. Uh, <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoyed it and um, the next video will be about the spiritual paths, how you can see what type of spiritual path you're being pushed to, to follow. Um, there's a lot of people who, especially because I've been an astrologer for so long and a lot of, my, a lot of people that come to astrologers are interested, you know, they're, they're following some type of path. And they want to know, you know, if they don't resonate with it or it just doesn't feel right to them. Uh, and it's always good to know, you can look at their chart and see if um, what they're doing is correct for them or will, um, will benefit them in the best way possible. <laughs> so um, I'm going to talk about that next time. And um, that's a little more in depth, but I'll, I'll explain it as best I can. <laughs> All right, so um, thank you for watching, and until next time.